Hi, my friend, and welcome to Z Study Hub, your home for scholarships, university applications, and generally studying abroad. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about accommodation because I know it's a big deal, especially uh, for international students who are traveling to study abroad. A lot of people want to know whether they should go for student housing or they should go for private housing. I'll be giving you the pros and cons of both. And ultimately, at the end of this video, I will share an experience with you and give you my personal verdicts and what I would go for. It's about the price that is your finances it's about preferences and it's about convenience for both options definitely you'll pay and in most cases you are sharing a space so let's talk about the two distinctions because i have lived in student housing and i've also lived in private um, accommodation as well so i think i have a very good idea about what i'm going to be talking about so let's start with student housing what are the pros and cons one of the important benefits of getting student accommodation is that you don't have to struggle with going for viewings so in, in, in the case of private housing you'd have to go see different places arrange viewings go see here go see there student accommodation you don't really have to go through that stress but most importantly you don't have to deal with things like um, references guarantors and all of the other things that some private landlords are likely to be asking you for it makes it easier compared to if you were to go for um, a private housing the benefits of student housing is that you just pay or you just make an arrangement and if your university's housing gives you accommodation then you got you don't have to provide extra documentation among other things you may provide some documentation but it's not stressful it's not something you cannot have access to which naturally moves me to my second point the fact that you are taking student housing shows that you it's likely that you've even had it before coming to study abroad or to come, come into the uk so with that in that case you've already prepared ahead of time so when you come here and you need to create a bank account you already have an address but if you come and then you're not sure where to live and you're still trying to break out to work out um private housing then you're trying to get a place so you don't even have a permanent address that you can use to apply for uh, a bank account and other things that you need so that's another advantage of student accommodation that you're able to get an address early to be able to process some things that you need like a bank account for me one of the benefits um, of student accommodation which i really thought was important was the networking opportunities so imagine living in um, a space with people from various parts of the world who are studying at your university studying various programs that you can network with um, so when i was a student i was sharing a flat with six other people one was from the us one was from singapore one was from zambia one was from china um i was from ghana and there was someone else that i've, I've forgotten but we're like a diverse group of people and we were able to just understand each other learn from each other share so you're able to network with people from various countries and also for people from people who are in your university but are studying different things the beautiful thing about this is that also sometimes we organize these networking events in the common room so maybe when it's time for diwali uh, which is an indian festival i think then they can organize something you come they share indian food and there are times that there's just free food or free confectionery or something in the common room that you can go pick up and so all of these give you an opportunity to come downstairs talk to people i said downstairs because in my university it was downstairs but to just meet in common areas talk to people in your hall get to know them exchange ideas make new friends in your university and that is a very beautiful thing about student housing that you will not necessarily get in private accommodation where i was we had a common area a study room so you'd have computers there printers there that you can easily use and that also makes it easy for you to go and sit there if you want to study or if you want to use a computer maybe your laptop is faulty and you want to use a the shared computer in the common room you can use that and if you really want to print something you can use a printer as well so of course they know that there are students living there so they have put made provisions that would make it easy for you to just be able to study and do the things that you have to do so the study rooms are also really important um, and so if a place like that is important to you you might want to consider it because it's even a place that maybe you you if you 
not very comfortable in your room you can go and study in the study room again maybe you and your friends can have group meetings and study together so that's also an option if you want to consider that as well these are the pros that i can remember now let's go to the cons with the cons it is very few cons um, the first con for me is that compared to private accommodation student accommodation is slightly higher than a private accommodation but then again sometimes it can be very similar depending on where you are and then depending on the kind of accommodation so even with students house and they have different kinds of um, properties or different kinds of rooms some may have some can be an end suit uh, others wouldn't be some can have bathrooms in it others wouldn't and the prices would vary depending on what you get it so sometimes it just might be a bit pricier than regular um, accommodation and when i say regular accommodation i mean private accommodation that is not to say that there isn't private housing which is much more than what you pay for student accommodation but sometimes when you search and then you're trying to get um, one that the price is minimal you could get one that is lower than student accommodation in a private house the second con here is that you would definitely have to well it depends on the arrangement but most likely you would have to move out after your program so if for instance you're in the uk and then your program ends in september but your visa allows you to live uh, to be in the country till about january you would still have to leave because the next batch of students would have to come into the student accommodation so you would have to leave and find somewhere else to stay that would be the other disadvantage and while if you were in private housing you wouldn't necessarily have to move out that if you and your landlord agree that you still can be there so that's the other um disadvantage of have been in student accommodation the last con i would say is that sometimes some people like to organize parties and depending i, I do have a lot of that but just putting it out there so you know some people may have parties and if it's on in your flat they may disturb you every once in a while but um it also really depends it's not always the case so these are the pros and cons of student housing so let's go to private housing i think that with the private housing i've spoken about it even a bit while I was talking about student accommodation because the pros here for instance is that the prices can be competitive so sometimes it's not as high as student accommodation so that can be a good thing because you can look widely on the market and see what you can what you can get for the amount the second thing is that you would also have to share with people depending on the place you get you could be alone and that depends on your money or you share with fewer people um, compared to how some students housing arrangements are done so maybe you can share with three other people they are four in the flat whilst um, you wouldn't have to share with say six or seven people in a student flat but with that said in a student flat you still have a privacy i think that the arrangement is done in a way that it's not very intrusive but then again if you want to live at a place where you live in alone if you can afford it or if you want to be able to share with people and that is sharing with a smaller group of people you can consider that arrangement as well the third one is pretty obvious that is not being asked to move out after your studies um, that is if you still have a good an acceptable arrangement with your landlord you can still be there even after september when you're done with your course or depending on where your course finishes so these are the, the, the pros of private accommodation with the disadvantages which are the cons there are situations where you need like references and all of those other things and if you do not have them it might be a struggle but in some cases they wouldn't require for references especially if you are sharing but it can be difficult if you want to take it like an an entire house that's when it gets really difficult so sometimes it's not as difficult but just to let you know that sometimes you need some kind of proof or some kind of extra information if you want to get into private accommodation compared to student accommodation another con of um, private housing is that sometimes you're not really sure the people you live with and that can make you a bit uncomfortable especially if the personalities are people that are not really people that you get along with um, but with student accommodation you know that at least these people are students and you can feel safe around them and um, so that is not really a huge thing but it also depends on whether you're very picky or very concerned about the people you're around with some people are really really nice i've had some really f nice um flatmates and so i think it really depends on the personalities involved lastly on the cons of private housing you wouldn't have a community like you would if you were in student accommodation so there are not people or you don't have a lot of people around you where you'd be like hey hi every time um or where you'd be like okay so in this particular 
um, hall, we have a group of Indian students or a group of African students or a group of Ghanaian students. That, that community might not necessarily be there like if you were a student housing where you can really identify people that's if you're that the friendly type so these are the pros and cons i hope they help you make a choice now i'm just going to base this on um, summarize a personal experience and just share with you what i would do or which one i would go for if i were to do it all over again before i proceed i just want to encourage you that if you have not yet subscribed make sure you do that right away because this is a place where i share a lot of useful information so you don't want to miss out on all the other information i'll be sharing so four of my three of my friends and myself um one night two nigerians one kenyan and myself decided that at the time we had achieved and we decided that we would come together and find a place together in order to so we can live together and study because we we're all at the at the london school of economics okay three of us were at lse one was at the london school of hygiene so our universities were very close to each other it was really difficult for us to find a place um, together and the whole process was so tiring to a point that two of us had to finally take student housing and the others also for some reason took private accommodation but it was a very difficult journey uh, to begin with we got there we decided to take airbnbs to be at in the live in the yeah, stay in airbnbs for some time before sorting it out but it was nearly impossible it was really stressful on that note if i had to do it all over again i would do student housing but there are certain things you should be mindful of for instance if you're paying 600 pounds for private housing and you're paying 100 pounds for transportation why not just pay 700 pounds for student housing it depends but that's what the rational thing that i would do um, how unless of course it's it's not that far and you realize that truly truly it is worth it then you can go for pri private housing otherwise you can still take student accommodation and if you want to move out of student accommodation and do private housing afterwards you can sort it out hopefully by then you wouldn't be under any kind of pressure you, you can do it at your own pace i thought to share this with you to help you make your own decision but to also just be really genuine and not throw you out there to let you know what i would do and so i definitely would start with student housing and then later on if i had to do something else move out i would because some people places are really really nice um student accommodation some of them are really nice private accommodation some of them are also really really nice so it depends on what you find but then again understand that money is very important so just weigh your budget weigh your options consider what i have told you right now and make sure that you get the best option or the best choice for you don't forget to hit the subscribe button also if you know that this will be useful to anyone make sure you share it with them so that you can also benefit and make a good decision thank you so much for watching lots of love very best wishes bye